Today I'm going to be working on this unique piece of furniture. It has already been cleaned, sanded, and bondoed. I'm going to use a synthetic brush to apply the primer. I'm going to just do one coat of primer. You want to make sure you stir the primer very well. It tends to separate. Mix the primer thoroughly until it blends. A nice little trick I found is just using a vacuum cleaner to get all of the dust out of the corners. I'm making sure to cover every inch of this piece with primer. It took quite a while to do, but it is a necessary step specifically with this piece, because this piece was not in perfect condition. Now that we are finished with our primer, we're going to start with our Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to be using ivory as the base coat. brush to go around the hardware. I will end up getting a bit of paint on the hardware, but I just want to minimize that, hence the detail brush.
So what I'm planning to do next is create texture on the sides of this piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush. I'm gonna dip it in the paint like so, dab it on and blow it dry with my blow dryer. And this will create a nice textured look on the sides of the piece. I'm planning to keep the top flat and uh, let's see how this works out. This will be my first time attempting this. to be using the color Cashew by Waverly and mixing it with some water in my spray bottle. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply this onto the piece. This is the water to paint ratio that I used. So this is the first time I've ever done this technique and I wanted to start off with a color that was close to my base coat because I did not know what I was doing and I did not know what would happen. So I decided to just transition slowly from the lightest to the darkest color. And then also at the end, I added a bit of the lightest color again, just to add a bit of highlight. of paint I'm going to use hazelnut by Waverly again I'm just gonna mix some into my water bottle so I am using the same technique as I did with the color cashew I'm gonna just be layering color upon color, layer upon layer.
this technique is called the ragging technique because you use a rag to wipe off the excess paint. It's cool because you can create layers and make it look texturized. the color sandstone by Waverly just to give it a bit of a highlight effect. technique with the color hazelnut just to give it a bit of a richer color. to give this piece kind of a leathery feel and that's what this is turning out to be for me. And now I'm going to use the color cashew as the trim. I'm going to keep my lines tight by using frog tape. That's a painter's tape that will help keep everything in place.
I'm going to use cashew to paint the top of this piece and remember I kept the top part flat. time to apply gilding adhesive to our hardware. I'm going to go ahead and use this crappy little brush to do so. So this is my jar of copper leaf flakes. I try to collect as much as I can when I'm done with these projects. Just because there's always little bits here and there that do need a little extra gold leaf and I don't want to bust out a whole leaf for just a little corner. copper leaf.
overnight I um, didn't want any real rips and tears in this copper leaf and I wanted to look that aged so I wanted to make sure it got really set on that glue and then the following day I took a brush and removed the excess perfectly firm and soft to be able to pull off this copper leafing. Again, there's my trusty jar, just trying to conserve what I can.
are done with the copper leaf, what I'm going to do next is protect the piece with clear wax. And after that, what I'm gonna do is a little bit of experimenting. I saw this on another video that Chris Donna did. If you haven't seen her work, I would check it out. So it was more of like an experimental video that she did and she took uh, some cinnamon powder that you'd find in the kitchen and she mixed it with clear wax. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna just uh, add a little bit of that brown wax with the cinnamon in various spots of our piece. And then I'm thinking what I'm gonna do on top of that is just add a, a touch of gold gilding wax just to add a little bit of extra sparkle and shine. Let's see what magic happens. wax and then I added some cinnamon to it. So don't do this if you don't want the following thing to happen. <laughs> uh, I ended up with a bit of a chunky effect on the piece and I was left wondering why this wasn't matching to what I saw from that Chris Donna video and I realized it was chocolate powder that you could use in place of brown wax. And so what I ended up doing, I mixed my Dixie Belle clear wax with some chocolate powder and voila, I had a nice thick creamy brown color that I was after. This toned the whole piece down and ended up being exactly what I had wanted. top with a bit of the brown wax as well just to give it an aged feel. By this point the piece was heavily waxed so I actually just took a bit of that chocolate powder and put it on my paintbrush and went over the edges of the hardware to continue to give it an aged feel and the chocolate powder actually adhered to the wax and stuck just buffing out any marks that I don't like and blending everything together here. I'm taking this gold gilding wax and I'm pretty much just going over the hardware and all of the corners. I want to give it just a delicate touch of gold.
again, I don't want to overwhelm this piece with any more shine. I just want to add a touch of that gold to bring everything together. watching. If you did like this video, please go ahead and press that like button. And if you'd like to see more like this, you are welcome to subscribe.